Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is Congo Bongo for the SG-1000, based on the Sega arcade game of the same name. The game was also ported to Apple II, Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Atari 8-Bit, Commodore 64, ColecoVision, Intellivision, MSX, DOS, SG-1000, TI-99, and the VIC-20. The player takes the role of a red-nosed safari hunter who tries to catch an ape named Bongo. The hunter seeks Bongo to exact revenge for an apparent practical joke in which Bongo sets fire to the hunter's tent, giving him a literal hot foot. In other words, he tries to set his feet on fire, despite Bongo wearing no shoes or having shoelaces to set on fire. The original arcade game had four levels, though the ports always had anywhere between two to four and the SG-1000 version that we are playing today only had the two. So without any further ado, here goes. As soon as you turn the game on, you will be on this title screen with this music that plays over and over until you press button one or button two on the controller. You use the control pad to move around and you use buttons one and two to jump. This is the only way to avoid the coconuts that will knock you back down a level in case they hit you, as well as the monkeys that will latch on and slow you down. If the monkeys do latch on, you can just jump repeatedly, you'll knock them off. And you want to run and jump and climb your way to Bongo in order to end the first half of the level. The second half of the level takes place in a swamp-like area with a top-down overhead view. You want to avoid falling into the water, and you also want to avoid being touched by the snakes. And you will need to use the hippo as a platform to get the bongo. Just jump onto the hippo, and then jump the bongo, and then you'll automatically go to the first half of round two. The first half of round two is much like the first half of round one, except one of the bridges above the waterfalls, in, case, in this case the one above the left waterfall, is missing, so you have the jump. Other than that, you're avoiding coconuts and monkeys as always. And when you reach 10,000 points, you'll get an extra life. This is the only extra life you'll get in the game, so try not to die. And here is more of the same for the second half of round two. This time around, however, you do have more snakes. You can use the lily pads and the fish's platforms though it is possible to land in the water and lose a life because they move so you do want to be careful round three has the bridge above the right waterfall missing instead of the one on the left also the second monkey leaps down after a specific amount of time from the upper right hand corner of the screen which is, which will definitely take you off guard if you're not careful. The swamp area of round three has the first bridge to the first platform gone. So you actually have to jump over the water to get onto the platform. And you want to be careful because it is possible for the lily pads to sink and send you into the water. And if you're in the water when they sink, or if you're on the lily pads when they sink into the water rather, you will lose a life. Usually I use the wooden platforms to get over to the hippo platform, but I took a gamble and used the fish instead. And that proved to be a good move. Round four has both of the waterfall bridges missing. So you will have to be very careful at the platform between the waterfalls. It should also be mentioned that if you walk onto that slope in the middle of the cliff section, you will knock any monkey that is currently hanging onto your character off without having to jump repeatedly. Keep that in mind. And now, the lily pad that we use for the first three stages to skip about half of the swamp area is gone. 
So we now have to carefully use the platforms here. And somehow I managed to jump right onto the hippo, the very edge of the hippo, and make my way to Bongo for the fourth time. Once you beat round four, you've basically beaten the game. Every round after the fourth is just a repeat of the fourth. This is usually where my games end, because you only get one life during the course of gameplay, and you only have two other lives to go along with it. And I just showed off one of the ways to die, which is to fall right into the water there, which is something you definitely don't want to do. When I scale the cliffs here, I always make sure that I go up so that way I'm near the wall. That way, in case any coconuts do hit me, I'm not knocked that far back. And as you can see, round five is more or less a repeat of the fourth. Again, this is where my games usually end. I try to use the fish platform here, it doesn't exactly work, and I end up losing a life that way. I thought I could land right on the tail and somehow leap my way to that platform over there across from Bongo, but sadly I could not. Also, once you beat two, the two sections, the cliff and the swamps, you just go straight back to the cliffs for the next round. You don't even get the hot foot animation that was in the arcade. And that was my last life, so that is the end of my session of Congo Bongo. Not a bad game. Obviously, they couldn't put all the levels in there. There are two more levels. One where you have to avoid rhinoceroses, and another one where you do even more platforming in a swamp-like area, much like the second stage in this particular port of the game. And I didn't really have much of a problem with the game. The graphics are easy to, easy to identify. You can tell what Bongo is. You can tell what the monkeys are. You can tell what the coconuts are. The snakes, the fish, the lily pads. The graphics are very basic, but they do get the job done, and they're not absolutely terrible. The sound and music, again, pretty basic. This is the SG-1000, Sega's very first home console that we're talking about. But... I didn't hate it. Play control, I didn't really have much of a problem with it. It's pretty tight. It does what it's supposed to. There was no lag or delay or anything. It pretty much functioned like it should have. And this is a game that you could probably play for 5, 10, maybe even 20 minutes if you're bored. It's a good way to pass the time before you decide to go ahead and play another game just a couple of minutes later. Still, it's not a bad arcade port. It may be missing two of the levels, but I had fun figuring it out and playing through the game and figuring out how stuff worked and how to do things and how to handle stuff. If you're somehow collecting for the SG-1000, this isn't a bad place to start. And that is it for Let's Play Congo Bongo. I will have a commentary free video of this video in case anybody wants that. That will go up after this one. But other than that, that's pretty much all I can say about this game. So until then, this is Prince Watercress. Hopefully I'll be back with another game. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. Maybe it'll be somewhere in between. Who knows? Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, and see you guys later.